All right, so welcome everybody. We are back and we are live and welcome to another episode of the Unblinded Real Raw. My name's Fernando and first off, thank you. Thank you for stopping, being here, joining us and celebrating as we demonstrate that influence is a superpower. It's present here and there's some opportunities to learn it here as well. So if you're the first time coming in or maybe you're not, let's explain what's gonna happen. We're gonna spend the first half getting to know each other, building some rapport. Then we're gonna drop it into a little competitive influence off. We have two amazing contestants three powerful judges and a role player in a competition on how to go from hello to yes on something that is meaningful for them. So Sean, before we kick it off to Vivian to introduce what's present for you on this Mastery Monday. Hey, on this Mastery Monday, what is present for me is the power of heart-centered, integrity-based influence and that there's darkness in the world. And when integrity meets darkness, uh, integrity wins, but it's like, what do we do with it? So let's roll right in, keeping our time integrity for today with Vivian. Um, the amazing person that kicks this off. Vivian, what's happening? Oh my God, this is so exciting. We have so many fabulous contestants. We have an artiste by the name of Claire Brown, and she's an executive real estate broker at Keller Williams. 18 years ago, she started selling real estate to pay for college and fell into a career she loves to this day. She's also a relationship and business coach who launched her own podcast called power women and she also has a new book ring or fling a power woman's guide to self-discovery setting standards and dating with confidence so welcome claire thank you so much for having me i'm excited to be here and claire where are you coming from today welcome little rock arkansas all right awesome little rock and we have we have Don Hobbs, who just changed his name to add expert partners, just FYI. And he used to be in Texas, but now he's in Puerto Rico. Palmas del Mar. Ah. <laughs> exactly. He's got a beautiful background, Sean. I see a palm tree in the background. Oh, he's powerful. the founder. No, please Sorry. Go ahead, Vivian. He's a founder and chairman and CEO at Don Hobbs Training and Coaching. His bright career started at 18 years old under the tutelage of the internationally renowned businessman and speaker, Jim Rohn. He then worked his way up to become president and co-founder of Hobbs Herder Advertising, an industry interrupter and leader in real estate marketing. He was named top 25 most influential people in real estate. Mm -hmm. He's also co-founded Hobbs Herder Insurance Marketing Systems, Hobbs Herder Training, and with MAPS, the number one training company in the world, he teaches bold businesses and the one thing, you got to tell me what that one thing is, his ultimate vision is to inspire people to change their lives and businesses. So welcome, Don. Thank you so much, Vivian. Don, I've heard wonderful things. So how are you, sir? Doing well, Sean. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. This is All an right. exciting step. Yeah. yeah. Welcome, welcome. Awesome. And so, uh, Vivian, we have some amazing judges for today. We do. We have Doug Kirkpatrick. He is uh, an organizational change consultant and partner at New Focus, an internationally consulting firm born in Canada, whose focus is to translate strategy into action. A TEDx speaker and keynote speaker, executive coach, educator. Plus, he's the best-selling author of Beyond Empowering and the No Limits Enterprise, his latest book with Forbes. He is also a member of the Forbes Speaker Network and serves as director of the Association for Talent Development. So, welcome. Doug, how are you? Super fantastic. Good to be here. Yeah, and nice to meet you all. Yeah, where are you coming from today, Doug? Coming from Northern California, right. 100 miles due east of San Francisco <laughs> in the uh, far belt of Northern California, where it's going to be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit today. Amazing. And how did you make your way to the real raw, Doug? So I got a call from Rebecca in Seattle. And she introduced me to Lorelai, uh, yeah. and uh, Lorelai and I had a couple conversations. Here, yeah. here I am. Yeah, well, welcome. Thanks for being here, Doug. Cool. And so, yeah, let's uh, keep going, Vivian. Well, Amy has beautiful original artwork behind her. Amy Moberger. At 56, she attended Donnie Epstein's transformational ultimatum program, where the desire to start painting just Boom, flourished. And just three months later, she landed a gallery contract at Mac Worthington's Contemporary Gallery of Art in Columbus, Ohio. Woo! Amy Morberger is a photographer as well and is self-taught, a fluid artist specializing in mixed media, including acrylic and resin, which are her favorite. But she also designs apparel, leggings, hoodies to swimwear in her signature composition, which is boldly colorful, modern and contemporary. So welcome, Amy. Amy, Thank you so much, guys. Great to have you here, Amy. And Thank where you. are you coming from today again? 
I am residing currently in Anna Maria Island, Florida, where the Tampa Bay meets the Gulf of Mexico. Oh. And uh, we, we actually live in St. Petersburg, but we have a rental on the island and we lost all our renters due, due to the mm -hmm. virus. So we headed down here. We've been down here for three months, enjoying the sun and the surf. And I've been painting up a storm and really enjoying it here. What are you painting right now, Amy? Uh, acrylic, acrylic on canvas. Very cool. And anything in particular that you're working on right now? Beach scenes, always a, a lot of beach scenes. <laughs> I'm inspired by the sand and the surf and this, I'm out on the sun, as, looking at the sunset every night and just, it just um, really inspires me for nature. Amazing. Nature scenes. It, it's a, it's a acrylic flow painting. It's abstract. And so it's not like I'm using a paintbrush and making specific things. It's more manipulating paint through pouring and, and um, different mediums. And like, it's much more contemporary and abstract. Amazing. Well, thank you, Amy. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. And last but certainly not least, we have... Una, 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 Una. I just love your name. <laughs> Una Duncan is an, a multi-award winning fitness expert, author of the international best-selling books, Healthy as F and Diary of a Healthy MFer. She is an in-demand media expert specializing in helping people get healthy and happy. Her unique formula has changed the bodies and habits of thousands of people all over the world. Una is the founder of the Feel Good Movement, which recognizes that fitness is not about a number on the scale, it's about feeling good. Una, what's happening? Not much, how are you, Sean? Uh, I'm, I'm doing well, I'm doing well, but I like the titles of your book. There's like a lot going on there. Thank you, thank you. It's interesting, um, I, I, I had the privilege, I hit number one on the bestsellers list, and on that week, there was seven of us that had F in the title. So oh, wow. it really, yeah, it hit a trend. F or A, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations and thanks for being here. Where are you coming from today, Una? I'm in Toronto, Canada. All right, we have uh, we have like north, south, central, like east, like yeah, we're everywhere. So awesome job, Una. And uh, we have, of course, our role player Tony Rodriguez, Mr. Get Up and uh, Get Up and Grow, and you grow through what you go through. Tony, how are you, brother? Tony Robbins, trainer extraordinaire. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I'm doing well. And thanks for the tip, Luna. Now I know what I've got to add to my title. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so always great to be here with, with such great people. Um, happy to, 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 to certainly, again, just support and be here and see what, what, uh, what comes next. I was a, a pregnant woman last Friday. So let's see what, what, what people are going to make me as a, as the role player. Interesting. Yes. By the way, I will awesome. say, I've got to jump in and say that part of what Vivian said about Don is missing something. He was also the president of the Jim Rohn company for a couple of years. Wow. So is. I just wanted to add that in because that, that was missing. Who, Tony Robbins. Oh, thanks, Tony. And he has, yeah, we have mutual friends. Go ahead, Don. No, I was just thanking you for, for including that. Jim's a big part of my world and was uh, there in the early days when I was 18 through 26 and and it was uh, great. And, and Sean, I think you gathered that Tony and I worked there when I was 18. He was 17. So uh, oh Tony Robbins God. and I kind of grew up together. So we've, we've been friends for a lot of years. That's awesome what, what were those days like? I can't even imagine. Crazy. You know, we had, uh, you know, we, we, had, we were a couple of the young guns. And we had uh, a couple of guys who ended up running off to go start a company called Herbalife were there. And oh just a, a composite of a whole lot of young young people that were all around Roan and just got lit up and we all went off and blew up the world and and uh having some fun doing it so it was uh it was pretty amazing but being around that influence and he was you know Roan was such a father figure for me uh at that time you know it was, uh, I was just a kid I didn't have a great uh father figure great, great role model so it was um you know, he became my my dad and wow. and uh it was really awesome being around him for so many years uh, that, extraordinary brother and it, it's an absolute honor and pleasure i do know uh, some of those stories not uh, i mean just decently well um but i, I am clear on who mr Rohn uh is and was and his relationship to tony and so many incredible people and so really it's an honor to have you here and thank you for sharing yeah of course thank you i saw joseph mclennan was on not long ago and he and he and i go back a long long ways as well so i know you've had lots of uh interesting people on the show and and thanks for having me no. Well, thank you. Thanks for being here. And so then I guess kind of everybody has an idea of how it works, sort of, um, or maybe not. 
It's one six minute conversation cut in half, three minutes, three minutes. Tony will be play a role to be anybody you want him to be. Whatever the yes is that you're seeking in the world, the yes that you're seeking that matters. It could be a sale, it could be a longer meeting, it could be a contribution, it could be somebody to be a business partner, it could be a major stage, a movie, a book, whatever it is that will be a yes that's relevant to, to you in the world um, for Don and Claire. And that's kind of what we're up to because influence is a superpower, uh, knowing what to do with it. And uh, also knowing like when to say no, like that matters too. And the judges are here to assess in the first round how well you open up Tony's listening and how you put something at stake for Tony. And the second round, we get into like who you are, what you're doing, how you solve that challenge and move into an agreement. So um, let's go this way. Claire, I have a one or a two under the table. What do you think it is? Two. It is a two. Claire got it. So would you like to go first or second in the first round? I'm gonna go second. All right. I sure didn't know that I was going against Don Hobbs. Nobody prepped me for that. <laughs> well, so yeah. So Don is like in the house and Claire is in the house. And Don, who would you like Tony to be? Uh, Tony, how about if we uh, how about if we recruit you? There you go. How about if, how, hey, how about if you're a, how about if a woman though, correct? Just check. You're not a pregnant, you don't have to be pregnant. You just be a, a real estate agent with the company. Uh, let's say um, uh, you know, you used to be with Keller Williams, right? If I remember correctly, yep. that was where you came from. Correct. Yeah, so you could be a Keller Williams agent, and and uh, we're we're recruiting you. All right. So there you go. So and, and this is a conversation set up. It's like a six minute chat. First three minutes. Oh so, yeah. So are we making the rules? Do we know each other? Or it's you probably can, easier. You can, if we you can know each other or not. Whatever you want, Don. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, so why don't we, uh, we're old friends. We know each other through, uh, to through Tony Robbins. Why don't we do that? All right. Don, you got three minutes. Take us in, sir. Okay. Either you're Mr. Roboto or I am. I'm not sure which of my, if my signal is weak, but somehow you said whatever you want. Okay, here we go. So why don't you be, uh, hey, Tony, why don't you be, uh, why don't you be a Keller Williams agent? And uh, we know each other because we were at uh, Date with Destiny in December. Perfect. Okay, so um, I'm guessing I'm calling him. I'll call you, Tony. Yep. Ring, ring. I mean, is that what we're doing? Yep. Hi, Don. Hello. Did, did I freeze or did everybody else freeze? No, it says I'm unstable. I think it means my internet, but it could mean me. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've been okay for me. I've been able to hear you clearly the whole time. Okay, perfect. So. It goes from freezing. So, so Tony, are we uh, on a phone call? Ring, yep. ring. I'm calling you. Yep. So, hey, ring, ring. Hey, brother. Hey, hey ring, ring. How are you? Good, man. It's been a while. It's been uh, some crazy times through this COVID stuff. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, could always be doing better in real estate, but things are picking up. Good. How was the uh, How was the time for you with the COVID and and your real estate business? How did that How did that play out? Well, in the real estate business, it certainly slowed down quite a bit for a, a period of at least six to eight weeks, and things are starting yep. to pick up again now, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, how on a on a, you know if if we forget that period, and of course we're coming out of that, I think uh, there in New Jersey, you should be kind of coming out of that. How's how's the business picking up? What are you seeing, and and what's the mission for the rest of the year? How do you get twenty twenty on track? Well, you know, it's really just about staying in contact with, uh, you know, re-engaging the people that I was speaking with before and uh, reaching out to, to uh, my, my, my referral base and my client base and uh, getting, getting people out there again because uh, interest rates are at an all-time low and uh, there's a lot of people escaping New York right now uh, for, the, for the suburbs and, and most major cities. So we're definitely seeing an uptick. Well, you know, I, I have helped a lot of people as we talked when we were together at uh, the program and, and I told you, you know, we've had a chance to help a lot of people. And I, I guess I was thinking about you and th thinking you're such a powerful uh, uh, influence, you're such a powerful uh, guy. And I was just thinking about ways that we could work together in ways that I might be able to help you. Uh, and if, so if I give you a, a, a scale of zero to 10, where's your business today? And, and, you know, where on a, on a scale of zero to 10, where is it? And how do you get it to uh, be the biggest and best it could possibly be? Yeah, well, it's getting better. So I'm gonna say five, five maybe a six. Um, still okay. not where I'd like it to be, but certainly a lot better than it was two months ago. Good, so what would make it a 10? What would, what would open up the business and really give you 
the, uh, the structure just, and the success that you're looking for. Sure. Uh, just uh, connecting with more people, having more, uh, more, more, um, more one-on-one -on -one, uh, interactions with people and just more volume, more volume and, and uh, getting more people, uh, expanding my team as well to be able to handle more because uh, right now I'm doing probably more through my team than individually. I'm sure that was super powerful and I didn't catch any of it. You were all frozen in time. I could see Una's hair blowing like this in the wind, but other than that, I had nothing. <laughs> I it's said, just important I, stuff. <laughs> yeah, I said it, it's probably a six and I'd like it to yeah, be yeah. higher than that, but it's really through more client meetings and more connections and more sales meetings basically. Um, and really expanding my team to be able to take on more clients. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I, I tell you what, Tony, I would love to have a conversation with you about that because, um, you know, my business for years, I mean, was really about helping people develop their brand and, and get clients calling them. And I would love to make that a part of your business if that would help you and love to have some time with you to make that happen. Um, so let's, I don't know if we're setting up times now or, or Sean, if we've got another conversation to have that, but I would. He's going to be able to continue the conversation yeah. in about like five minutes. He just got to grab a call. He'll be right back. Yeah, I've got a call uh, coming in about 10 seconds, Don. So uh, I can jump back on with you in a few minutes. But if you want to, we can just wrap this end of it up now. Yeah, so Tony, why don't you pick up with Don in like five minutes? And yeah, we'll sounds good. Back. Talk soon, Don. Don, excellent stuff. Um, yes, so... Um, Doug, uh, what do you have? So maybe 20, 30 seconds of feedback for Don on what you thought went well and any opportunities for growth and then just a score on a one to 10 scale. So I would say, um, instead of asking what would make your business a 10, ask what, it, what exactly are your goals for your business? Maybe it just wants to be a seven. Okay. So I guess I'd give it a seven. All right, cool. Doug, thank you. Um, and Amy, what'd you have? Um, I was taking a lot of notes. I, I felt like it was a little just, it was a hot, it was a little uncomfortable in the beginning trying to establish rapport and, um, you know, I'm just, um, it, 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 it flowed once, once Don got moving, but then with the breakup of the sound and everything, it, it just kind of got a little, um, awkward. Um, but I think more um, qualifying questions and a little bit more in-depth questions, it, it just seemed kind of vague and kind of broad in, in what he was asking. Okay, so what'd you have for a score? Probably a six. Got it. Okay, and Una, what did you have? Um, I thought it was pretty good. I really liked that he uh, gave him a compliment. He said, I want to be able to help you. He made him identify where he was at and where he would like to be and create that tension there. I think what could have been improved was I would have loved to have heard a little bit of a hint about a specific area that he would have helped him with to create some curiosity to get him on the next call rather than something vague like, I'd like to help you. My business helps people with this. It was a little bit vague. And um, with the, I would have loved for him to with the rapport creating, because I totally agree with what you said, Amy, that it was a little bit vague at the front. I would have loved if you approached it with a little bit more energy of like, hey, I know you're a really busy guy, but I have this idea and I thought of you because you're the kind of person that would really benefit and kind of with a little bit more excitement. So I would give it an eight though. I thought, I thought the technique was good. I just would have loved a bit more energy and specificity. I finally got you back. <laughs> Thanks. All right, Claire, uh, are you ready? Sure. Okay. And Claire, who would you like Tony to be? Well, Tony, I'm going to keep you a man this time. Awesome. <laughs> um, but you're a man that's dating and you're trying to figure it out. Mm. And so I'm here to help you with that. All right. Tony, okay. you ready? Yes. I'm ready. Don't tell my wife. Claire, take us in. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Tony. It's Claire. How are you today? I'm doing great, Claire. Good. So tell me all things, Tony. Tell me your biggest problem today and how can I help you? My biggest problem. So off script for a sec, off role play. Do we know each other? Uh, have we met before? Or yes, this... we know one another. Sorry. So I know, I know who you are, what you do. Yes. Okay. All right. 
Great. Hi, Claire. So uh, what's my biggest problem? Um, I'm missing a couple of zeros on my bank account. Mm -hmm. And so does your business grow to the extent that you do? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, at times, at times, you know, it's where, when I put more attention on the business, then that it, it, it grows as much as I do. Where's your biggest source of personal pain right now, Tony? Um, in the dating scene. Yeah. So you're single and you struggle and the lonely is hard. Yes. And you've been single for many years. And yes. Failed many times. Yeah, I have success in business, um, but I just can't seem to find uh, the right person. And so why is that? What do you think is the issue that's holding me back? Uh, probably not putting enough effort on that and enough attention on that. Okay. And so in 10 years from now, what do you want your personal life to look like? Uh, I want to be happy. I want to, I want to maybe, you know, be settled down and have a couple of kids. Um, do you, you know, intend on having those children alone? Uh, no, no. Okay. And so what do we need to do to get there? I need to find the right woman. Okay. And so are we going to be purposeful in that? Uh, yeah, certainly I need to, I need to change something. Got to come up with a different strategy. So Tony, in your business, you're very purposeful, you're mission driven, and you outline a lot of different things. And so have you started to take time for Tony and really look at outlining your values and how purposeful you are in aligning this woman with your world? Yeah, I probably haven't spent the time that I need to, to do that. Okay. And so what would it look like to do that? Um, probably uh, uncomfortable. Okay. And so... When I say, when you say uncomfortable, is that because it's going to allow you to discover some other things that you don't want to discuss? Perhaps. Uh -huh. Never know what, what's going to come out. Right. And so why do you feel you've been keeping women, probably women of character and of value at a distance in order to make yourself single so that you're uh -huh. able to focus on other things? Yeah. Afraid of, of, of getting hurt and, 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 and not, not, uh, and failing. Right. Um, and what does failure give us? Loneliness. Mm -hmm. um, a low self-worth. Right. And what does failure in business give us? Um, opportunities for success. Right. It seems so like it also it. Gives us the same thing in our personal world if we choose it. Yeah, I think so. Listen, I got to take a call in about 10 seconds uh, or 15 seconds. I know the phone's going to ring, so I'm going to have to get off soon. Yeah. And so when is good for us to check back in again? I'm about 20 minutes from now. We can get on another call. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Tony. I've enjoyed it. All right. Thank you. Claire, good stuff. Claire, how'd that feel for you? Uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing a lot more than good. It was good. Um, I think it took a minute to get Tony in that mindset of not being married anymore, um, <laughs> which is a great thing. Uh, Not comfortable. For the record, very happily married. Very happily married. Jan Park, Jan Park, we'll check in on that, uh, Tony, and see like if you're telling the truth. No, I, I know you are. No, so, but I think, but that's good perspective though. So many people have a disconnect with the married life and the singlehood. Yeah. So, I and I know I, people that are like that. That's why I, I kind of just channeled that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we got. Una, what do you have uh, for Claire? So Claire, um, I thought you asked really interesting questions. And I can tell that you're someone who can really extract really useful and kind of deep information from people like right off the bat, which I thought was amazing. I would love to hear a little bit more of you listening to him. I felt a little bit like you asked one question and then right into the next and then right into the next without a little bit more um, affirming, oh, I hear you, oh, that must be hard. Mm -hmm. And um, just so you know, I have a little bit of a verbal tick and that you tend to start your, uh, your answers with right and so. Um, so you might want to just try to switch up the vocabulary a little bit. I hear you, yeah, that must feel like this, whatever. Um, I left the conversation a little bit unclear as to what your intentions were and how you could help him. Um, so I would have loved to have heard a little bit more of you listening to him and a little bit more of you offering some hope for where you'd like to take him. Awesome. So what do you have for a score? Um, 
I would say a six. Okay, excellent. Amy, what do you have? Um, Claire, Claire, you're a shark. <laughs> you go right in and, and attack. Um, you, you seem very confident and um, very direct. And I agree with Una that um, it, it would have been nice to, to, to let him open up. And it, it was like you were asking question after question after question. And I also wasn't quite sure what the outcome was and what you were trying to, to do in the end. Um, you, you come across as a little intense to me. Um, and I'm sure you're an extremely nice person. And, but it just felt like very kind of almost a little pushy, but very confident and very just like, just um, intense to me. Um, so that's, that's what I felt. So I, I, I mean, but I loved your confidence and I like, like you, you, you led the conversation and you seemed um, very direct. I, I give you a seven. Okay. Cool. Thank you for uh, thank you, Amy. And Doug? So as a guy listening to this, um, I, I felt uh, a little tense listening to this uh, these questions. And the theme of personal pain kind of jumped right out of the box, like a jack-in-the-box right out of the start of the conversation. And so that kind of, you know, created a frame or a mindset for the rest of the conversation. And then the, the questions were very, very personal. So I could see having this conversation if we'd been old friends and had intimate conversations over the last couple of decades, but if, if this is somebody you recently met or don't know that well, I, I don't really know how this conversation uh, would unfold uh, productively for you. Um, at the very end, you said you enjoyed the conversation. So I felt a little bit out of sync with the, the theme of the overall conversation, uh, but you, you are very intentional and pur purposeful and your questions are, are designed to get information that's, that's useful in your business. And so um, I think the structure of the questions is, is appropriate. It just seems like they need to flow over a longer period of time and perhaps a greater depth of intimacy. Um, I'm gonna say a six. Thank you, Doug. So um, we are ready for round two and I'll have some things to drop in on a little bit. Um, so in the second round, because Claire decided to go second in the first round, then Don, it's your choice. Would you like to go first or second in the second round? Uh, I'll go second. All right. Cool. Claire, so this, in the second round, we're just going to, it's a continuation of the first conversation. And now there's been some open access and connection. Um, and you can do anything you want with this second three minutes. But uh, typically, now it's about your services and um, your heroic, unique identity, how you solve whatever you put at stake, the, the rapport, and the, what you put at stake in round one, and then move into an agreement, um, a yes or no. So uh, does that make sense, Claire? Yes. All right, take us in. Hi, Tony. Hi, Claire. So have you had a few minutes to think about our last conversation, and how does that make you feel? Um, curious. Okay. And so I firmly believe that we're able to see in others what we see in ourselves. And so I recognize the lonely that you feel and I understand what it's like to focus on your business at a high level and then wonder why your personal world doesn't align with it and doesn't reflect the same way. Um, and as you know, I started my career very early, very successful and was the defining mother and wife and then found myself single um, in the mid thirties and I had never done online banking. And now there's the internet and all these dating apps and all the things. Yet I was extremely successful and commas and zeros in the bank account weren't an issue. And I still had never had a man ask for my phone number. And I didn't know what I was doing. And it took a long journey to discover myself in the middle of that, that lonely to then figure out how do I acquire and attract men and others of character in my world to then have dating wealth. And so I understand that journey at a very high level, which is why I asked the questions that I did. And so I wanted you to know that one, you're not alone. 
Two, I understand. And three, I've written a book that lays out that journey and a method and practice in order to aid you in developing your own standards in this personal world yourself. Does that help? Uh, it could, I guess. Um, yeah, I guess it could. The other thing is, is that I'm here through that journey as well to guide you, coach you, um, and, and aid you in, in holding you accountable the entire time. Because, you know, we discussed failure, and that is never easy alone. Um, and then the accountability of holding us to our own standards, especially in our personal world, sometimes is not easy since we act on emotion instead of logic. So what is, what is your, your training or your coaching actually entail? I'm, I'm, you know, I, I know that you said you got a book and um, I guess that's a place to start, but where, you know, is it a program? Is it a, you know, do you teach me how to do the online dating? Are you going to take me out to dinner? What, what, no, I don't date my clients, Tony. And so there's the um, option for you to do the online coaching program, which will take you chapter by chapter in the book, which also includes a weekly call with me, um, but it's a group program. There's the one-on-one -on -one coaching option um, that allows more in-depth and intimate conversations just between the two of us. And we can discuss the book. We can discuss the coaching program and outline of that course, but we also detour and discuss things that are more uh, specific to you in areas that we need to dive deeper into to help you in your journey. Okay. What's the success rate that you had with, with, with other, with other um, entrepreneurs and business, business owners? Well, so I'm going to ask you, what is the definition of success? In uh, this there, there we have that 15 seconds left. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to go again. Um, but yeah, just uh, success is, is, is finding happiness and, and, and joy in someone else. Mm -hmm. you can, right, go ahead, Claire. You can take 10 more seconds or so and complete it. So finding the goal, I would counter that, Tony, and say the goal is to find happiness and joy within yourself. Mm. And that is the goal because you're never going to be able to attract someone to mirror and match you unless you know it within you. Very well. Okay. We'll talk another time. Thanks for the call. Very nice. Tony, if you had one word for the encounter with Claire, what would that word be? Uh, it was good. I, I, I put that one out there for you. I wanted to see if you were going to hit that one. It was good, but it wasn't, it wasn't uh, in the beginning of the conversation. It wasn't clear. She's confident in what she's saying, but uh, you know, if I was going to give feedback, which I will, I would encourage me to speak more uh, on, the, on the second half uh, mm -hmm. and really press, press a little bit of the pain button, maybe a little bit more, just press on that a little bit to, to, to make that um, and, and just say a little bit more of what, because I, 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 I pull the program out of you. Uh, you were just telling me that there's a book and there's a program, but, you know, I would just go a little bit further, but it was good. All, all around, it was good. Very confident. Okay. I like it. All right, Don, you ready, sir? I am. I'm not sure if I want to do video or not. No, it took, uh, took its toll on me to, to be in jumbled last time. So I think I'm going to try it this way. Let's see if we make it. Yeah, awesome. Um, all right. Are we, are we good, Tony? You can hear me? I can hear you right now. Yep. Hey, ring, ring, Tony. Hey, Don. Hey, how are you, brother? I, I, I really enjoyed our conversation the other day, and I was just trying to uh, I was thinking about you again today, and I, I'm telling you, man, I think we've got some some cool things to do together, and I would love to uh, look at how we can build. Um, talk to me about your your vision for your, you know, you were talking about that, you know, this COVID time has been weird. I mean, everybody's had kind of a weird thing going on, and that it, we're coming out of it. But what's the vision for your business moving forward, and where do you want to be in the next year, two years? Uh, I'd like to have just uh, my, my team working underneath me uh, or with me, but, uh, but my being not as hands-on uh, with as many of the transactions and just build out the team a little bit more and certainly have more success and continue to, to, to do well and, and, and grow beyond that. And as far as opportunity, I'm always opening, uh, open to listening to, uh, to opportunity for sure. What uh, kept you from doing that part up to now, working with I the team and... Right. Well, I've been learning and growing. Right. You know, you, you pick up uh, pick up different things along the way, so we continue to, to to learn and grow, and be better, hopefully. 
cool. I just did an interview the other day with somebody who's built quite a team, and I, I could share some of that with you. And uh, we should set up a time for us to talk about that specifically. Uh, I would love to do that. Tell me about what you know. What does the business look like with you running the team? Are you out of production? Are you staying in production? Do you want to step out? Are you wanting to be more like a almost a broker owner or, or a, a rainmaker team? Team owner, if you will, where's, where's the goal? Probably more of a rainmaker team or just re- having my team, running my team from the back and not be in production as much, except obviously there's always a, an element of, of involvement with the, the larger uh, corporate clients and, and developers. So I'd still be involved in that, but sure. not on a hand, hands-on uh, thing. And, but, but to be able to have a team that's going to be able to be happy and, 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 and have the revenue that they want as well. Yeah, that's awesome. So you really want what's good for them as well. Uh, I've got, you know, we're building an organization right now that's, that's very powerful and, and we're looking for leaders like you. And I'm just wondering if we, you know, might be able to dance together on this. Um, in New Jersey, I'm, I don't have anybody who's really a big time uh, leader there. But what I was thinking about is if I could help you not only create the, the income stream from what you're currently selling, move to where you're the kind of the rainmaker and help you grow that piece, but could also help you with some other elements of income. If I could help you where you've got some uh, more passive income to your business, would that be interesting to you? Absolutely. Passive income is always great. Because in real estate, you know, we generally speaking only have, like we get to, we get to make money. We get to make money when we sell houses, and we get to make money when, uh, in in your case, somebody on the team makes sells houses, and that's kind of it. So I, I've been thinking about ways that we could help you have multiple income streams. So if you're interested in that, I absolutely would love to have a, an in-depth time with you. And what I'd like to do is take you uh, into a, a call with some partners of mine. And let's talk about your, your real goals, the, the real structure of what you want to build. And we'll tell you more about what we're building in, uh, in essence across the country right now. And uh, with that in mind, um, let's set up a time for next week so we can really go deep and, and look, look at your business, look at what we're doing and see if there's a real match. All right. Well, sounds good. Always looking to, uh, always interested in listening to opportunity. Let's just see if there's a match uh, and see what, what, what's involved. Yeah, cool. Well, I've got, uh, what's fun about it is most people in real estate, you know, the, the best they can do is either buy a franchise or they don't have a lot of ownership. And I'd like to set you up so you have actually ownership in the company and, um, and really build something that goes beyond your, uh, your own talents and skills. And so uh, if that's interesting to you, we'll, we'll set that up. I've got a couple of people in mind that I'd love to have meet you. You're, you're uh, a special guy and your goals are really beyond what most people are thinking. And so I think we could do some really great things together. So let's great. do What's that. What's your company again? What's that? Last 10 What's seconds, it? Tony. Uh, I've, I've got to go. What was the name of your company again? Uh, we're EXP. So I'm, I'm actually, we built a large organization inside the EXP organization. And we're actually... Uh, Allison and I, I think you met Allison at the event. event. We've got agents from Hawaii all the way to the UK and in 27 states. So we're building a very large network of people with people like you. Well, again, I'm interested. Let's have a conversation and see where it goes. I got to take another we'll call. Set it up. On. Thank you. Right. Awesome. Thanks, Tony. Awesome. Look forward to it. Great stuff. Amy, what do you have? Let's start and go in reverse order. Amy, what do you have for Don? Um, so we're not going to talk about Claire's? But you go Claire first, which oh, okay. Yeah. I felt like Don, well, I'm going to talk about both. I'm going to weave them together. Um, Don actually, I felt had a lot of rapport with Tony and they were, he was pulling information out of Tony and letting Tony speak a lot. And so it just felt much more uh, mutual and just uh, collaboration. There was a lot of collaboration brought out of how Don could help Tony and how Tony could help Don. And it was more of a team um, working and, and the vision in the end was clear. Um, Claire, I felt, spent a lot of time talking about her 
own professional um, uh, contract and what she did and, and who she's made herself out to be. And it, it was a lot about your own personal like credentials. And Tony didn't really have enough time to talk. And it was establishing credibility of who you are and what you know your background is and what you're able to do. But I just didn't feel like there was a, a big connection between Claire and Tony in the common goal. And it was a little confusing as to what you actually could do with him when with working with him. I was a little confused on what the end goal was. And it just felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect there. Whereas I felt like Don and Tony had a, a really good rapport going back and forth and it was flowing. Um, yes. So thanks Amy. My score for Don is an eight for Claire is a six. All right. Thank you. Doug, what do you got? Oh, um, I'll start with uh, Don. Uh, I, I love the uh, let's find things we can do together, we can build together theme came right out of the box. Uh, immediate rapport, uh, creating a, a vision of what this, uh, you know, asking about his vision, what do you want to see in the future? What does that look like for you? And then how can I help you uh, reduce barriers to achieving your particular vision? And that was very powerful. Um, very clear, you know, how you want to be a rainmaker, I can help you do that. Um, organization is powerful. I love the metaphor of a dance. So it's not like I have to pledge my firstborn child, you know, we can dance and we can figure out how we can help each other. I thought that was a beautiful metaphor. Um, other passive income, who can, who can object to that? Uh, while helping you become the rainmaker that you really want to be. Um, great rapport. Um, you had a call to action, you know, let's have a call, talk with our partners, what, what can uh, we do for you? What are your goals? Let's figure out how we can dance together uh, and have fun. I mean, it was a lighthearted um, uh, conversation, but also led to some really powerful long-term goals, uh, talking ownership, et cetera. I like the idea of scarcity. Um, and we have a couple people in mind for this giant network in 27 states. Uh, so there's a, this idea of scarcity and you could be a part of something special. Uh, I thought it was uh, outstanding. So maybe technical issues, uh, uh, challenge, but I'd say an eight. Uh, going to Claire's, um, uh, definitely attempted to, to build rapport uh, out of the gate with the asking about emotions and how you're feeling. I thought the personal story uh, maybe took a little bit too long, uh, uh, you know, uh, Yes, it's a, it's a, it's a lines. It's a, a challenging uh, thing to be single and divorced and, and trying to build dating wealth. But I thought that took a little bit too long. And then the leading asset or offering was the book. And, and to me, a book is a way of building authority, but it's not necessarily what you're, you should lead with in terms of your offering to a client. So I, I would have uh, reserved that for a discussion of authority and uh, led with the online coaching program and the one-to-one -one coaching and the success rate. And, and uh, you know, you, you countered, Claire countered at the end, uh, but uh, I wasn't sure if countering was the right kind of language. Maybe it was, it should be more in terms of, well, here is the success rate. And by the way, there's a money back guarantee or something to that uh, in that line. So, um, I'd say um, uh, I will give a, a six to Claire. All right. Thank you, Doug. And Una, taking us home, what do you have? Okay. Um, so for Claire, uh, right off the top, you said, so did you have a chance to think about our last call? And I was a little bit like, what, what was he supposed to think about? Like, I was a little bit unclear there because I didn't know that you told him something specific to think about. Um, and then when you were telling your story, I get that you were trying to uh, establish yourself as a credible guide. And I think that you did a good job in saying, so I empathize with you. I've been in your situation before, but I would have preferred that you spent like a good part of that instead of talking about your situation, instead establishing your expertise in creating transformations for other people. So I think you can say quickly, I had this situation once too, and I have helped solve this problem for thousands of people. And here's one example that's just like you. So I would have loved to have heard a case study there rather than your particular story. And then I would have loved to have heard you clearly outline the plan of action that's gonna get him the result that he wants. Because he was asking for it, 
It was like, so what do I do? Do I get your book? Do you take me out for dinner? And then you said, Tony, I don't date my clients. And my heart broke for him because this is a guy who came to you saying, I'm being rejected. I'm lonely. And although you were joking, I get, you know, you're like, come on, I don't date my clients. But I just felt like this poor guy. And that's when my internet died. So it was just, I had this moment of being like, no. Um, so given that that's what I ended off with, I'm going to give you a four because I, I left feeling heartbroken for him. Um, Don, I love that you were, everybody's mentioned this. You were so personally invested in his success. Let's see what we can build together. I loved that, that wording. You listened to his answers, which I also loved. Um, you offered value on a very specific outcome. I love that you said, oh, you mentioned you were into team building. I can connect you with someone that's specifically good for that. So you offered value regardless of how the transaction is going to go, which I thought was amazing and would induce reciprocity down the road, maybe. Um, I also love that you said we're looking for leaders like you. So it was a really specific thing. The only thing I would have loved for your conversation was a little bit, because you kept using this word of like, let's build together, let's dance together. I would have loved to know, like, what is it that you want from me? Like what of this partnership you kept saying, I'll help you achieve these goals. And I would have loved for you to say something. And the reason that I want you is because I can tell that you're going to like, you know, showcase us. I know that we need a leader in this area and we've been looking for someone forever and you've been highly recommended or something that gives me an idea of what will be my part of this dance because otherwise I would go in a little bit suspicious but I, I would have totally got on the next call with you. It was great. Amazing. So great. I'm going to give you an 8.5. Awesome. I, I want to acknowledge Don and Claire uh, for their courage and vulnerability and I want to acknowledge uh, Doug, Amy, and Una because this was a very open panel of giving very direct and real feedback. And often folks are, you know, trying to, you know, maybe using softeners and uh, avoiding um, opportunities for growth. And so this is a beautiful job, right? Because that's what we're here to do is these are incredible people, all of you. And how can we take things to like a, the next level exponentially? Um, so just a quick tone, I'm going to jump in. I, I got a quick, couple of thoughts about putting something at stake and then what it might look like. So um, let's get the ring ring for the sake of time. And so, yeah, tell me again, thank you. Let's say you've already agreed that we're gonna talk for three minutes and it's like, cool, we're connected and we're 30 seconds in. It's like, so Tony, yeah, um, like, are you still, like, what's your involvement in the world of real estate at this point? Well, I'm still representing, you know, I've been in for 30 years and I'm still representing some developers and I'm working more with developers and a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, individual, um, uh, buyers and sellers, but for the most part, I uh, give those out to my team. Got it. Okay. So you have a team of folks working with you in real estate. Yes. Are you, are you a broker yourself? I am. Okay. Got you. So you have your own um, agency and a team that works there. No, I'm, I'm currently um, for the scenario anyway, uh, I'm with Keller Williams for okay. the scenario. So, um, yeah, I mean, amazing. And, and why it sounds like you're busy, you're committed. And like, what's this all about though for you? Like if ultimately you get to everywhere you want to go, it's about like a little bit more money. It's about some larger vision. Like what's really at stake for you? Uh, it's about, uh, for me, it's about uh, obviously creating more wealth and helping those that are on my team to do the same. And uh, obviously having uh, raving fan customers is always great. I'm passionate about personal development. So um, I, I also have a life and business strategist company. So I hold masterminds and I do some high level one-on-one -on -one, uh, strategy sessions with people. So that is something that I'm passionate about. As you know, I'm also, you know, I do events. Uh, so it, by expanding my team and having them take on more of the load, it, it allows me more time to have more impact in the world. All right, so I'm so hearing more money, impact. more impact. Yeah, I'm hearing impact and money, but why? Like why the impact? Like what's driving that? I'm here. You want to make money for your team. You want to build these things. You're a speaker, trainer, coach, leader, but why? Well, what you um, do this? When I first got into real estate, I had people literally betting against me, betting for my failure. I had my own father tell me how I was going to fail. And he literally placed a financial bet on me. So uh, that, that first, that if I didn't close in the first, first one in three months, then I would leave and go to work with him. Of course, he didn't own the company and he was in construction. So that wasn't really a thing for me. Um, nothing wrong with that. Just uh, certain events that happened in my life, bad, bad car accidents. So I had some physical uh, things going on. Let's pause. So, yeah. Let's say Tony would continue his answer. 
this is amazing, like deep open. And he complete his answer. I might ask a question or two. And then it might be so like, it sounds like everything's working amazingly. Um, what if anything is not working the way you want it to right now? Well, I just want to see people succeed wherever it is, succeed in business. Uh, and to me, success also equals happiness. All right, pause. So now Tony's fully invested. Tony, do you feel invested and engaged in yeah. your mission, your why, right? So be like, yeah, so can I share, Tony, I know we only got about 30 seconds left. Can I just share something briefly with you? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, my name is Don and um, I've had uh, a pretty crazy life too. And I started out working with Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, um, built an unbelievable business, business at Keller Williams. And I still drive and lead a team that is, is in 27 states, is in multiple countries. And I'm not presupposing that you can't get there on your own. Uh, but I've had the unique privilege of supporting 18 people, X number of people, do Y things. And I'd be honored to have a conversation with you that might show you what that could look like. And why you, just quickly, it's because you're so into personal development, you've been so successful. And I think there's a couple of things we might be able to do together that could have like one plus one equals like 10 plus. So if that's interesting to you, I'd love to chat more. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, so how did that feel for you, Tom? Felt great. I mean, because again, you engaged me. You actually, you, you know, and again, because this was actually a part of my story, it was easier for me to uh, dive in. Don, how did that, I know you gotta go in a minute. How'd that feel? It, it, it was beautiful, Sean. That was awesome. Very elegant. Love that. All right. Yep, so, love that. Don, how was your experience here today? I know we have seconds left before you go. Yeah. I hope. It, yeah. it was great and I appreciate the inv invitation to be here and to be, thank you all for uh, your contribution and your honesty. I love that. It's, uh, I, I agree with what Sean said. It's not always easy to get feedback and uh, tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So I appreciate that. Tony, thanks for the invite to uh, be part of this. Sean, great show. Thanks for making me part of it. And Claire, I want to talk to you again. Yes, we can. Honor. An honor. And Claire, I'm going to run. I'm going to Go ahead, Don. I'm gonna run for I'm gonna run for a meeting, guys. I'm sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Don. Uh, nice Thanks, to meet Claire. you. Claire, how was your experience? It was excellent. Thank you all so much. I so appreciate all the candor with all the uh, feedback. It was excellent. No, did a beautiful job. And Una, Amy, Doug, thank you guys for being here today. Um, deeply thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. You were one Thanks heck for of having a, me. Yeah, you're one heck of a panel, and I mean that because Tony's here every day and it's not often. I mean, Doug, you were like, you set the stage. You're like, boom, this is what it looks like. So Doug, thank you for your candor. Yeah, that was, you guys, you guys seriously were great. And again, the candid feedback, you don't see all the time because sometimes, listen, when I've been the judge, I've kind of, I've, I've pulled a, a punch or two just because, you know, I didn't want to be too harsh, but this was great. And, and the, that's why having these, these real raw role plays are so important. And so, uh, so poignant because, it's getting that feedback, like what Don said, is kind of leading with uh, your online program, not just because your book these days is, 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 is a really great business card. It's a fantastic business card. But, you know, so that was awesome. Amy, you, uh, Claire, rather, you did great. And the panel, you guys were amazing. Una and Amy, uh, Una, I mean, just like straight up, like, boom, great feedback. And, you know, um, you're like, oh, like you were viscerally sharing where something was left in a moment. Um, and the same thing, uh, Amy. So thank you all. Thank you Thanks so much. Guys. This is really fun. All right. Thank great you. to meet you guys. Yeah, great to meet you. Hope to see you nice again. Yeah. Bye. Thank you guys. Bye bye. Great meeting all of you. Bye. Thank you.